come here, get off. Today we're chatting with Rebel Miller, author of Awakening, the first book in the Realm series, which we read an excerpt from in the last episode. Rebel Miller is a fiction author who writes gripping romances about charismatic leaders who often turn social conventions on their heads. Rebel earned a graduate degree in communications and culture from Ryerson University and an undergraduate degree from the University of the West Indies. Rebel, plus hubby and sons, lives in the outskirts of Toronto, Canada, and enjoys overindulging in Pinot Grigio and caramel popcorn. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> And binges on an eclectic mix of movies, music, and angst-filled romance novels. Rebel, thanks so much for talking to us today. Oh, thanks for having me. We're excited that you're here, and Erica is especially excited about this Pinot Grigio. Oh, of course. Oh, I read that. I said we could totally spend a weekend together. Oh, for sure. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's my go-to. My go-to. I don't like either one of those things. What? So I feel like... <laughs> Okay. I don't. Okay, you don't I know if it's easier than that's the problem. I don't, know I don't drink wine. I don't <laughs> know how to wine. live. Okay. I'm living wrong. Okay. I'm not a wine person. Yeah. And I don't like caramel. I'm weird. It's fine. I'm okay <laughs> with it. Um, oh, before we get started, what are your preferred pronouns? Preferred pronouns? Mm-hmm. Oh, she, her, that kind of thing? Yep. Yep. Exactly that. Okay. Erica and I are both she and her as well. Excellent. So Thanks. we read your bio and again, me too on the Pinot Grigio and caramel popcorn. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I want to hear how you describe what you do. So can you tell me in one sentence, what is it that you do? I guess one sentence. I write romances that speak to today's romance reader. And that person is living in a world where diversity is pretty much the norm and kind of tries to talk about identity in a different way. Hmm. Yeah. That's great. Did you always want to be an author? It's so funny. I've always been a writer. So I've done public relations in my lifetime. I've, um, I do like consulting in that type of realm. And then it was really five years ago. So what is that? 2014, 2015, actually, that it just occurred to me, you know what? The time is now. I've, I've thought about it when I was in my early 20s and doing, you know, writing. And I just didn't feel that I was emotionally, re- emotionally ready. I didn't know what I had to say, kind of what I could add to, you know, the various romances or just fiction in general. And then as I got older, you know, I had the two kids and my husband. I had more life experience oh, wow. behind me. I started to feel like, you know what? I was like, you know what? I, I think I do have something to say. <laughs> and of course, I've been reading romances all my life, right? Uh-huh. Like, I remember being, like, what was I, under 10 and, you know, <laughs> hiding in my mother's closet <laughs> to read a romance. Yo, <laughs> same. What can I say? <laughs> I read through, like, all of Danielle Steele's books. Oh, yeah. Starting in the second grade. I'm like, it's so highly inappropriate. But like yeah. second, third, and fourth grade, I was consumed with Daniel Steele. Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So wrong. <laughs> but they're great. You know, that's the thing about romance novels. I think a lot of people, you know, it's changing now, I think, especially with, um, you know, e-reading. I think the world, people are viewing romance is a little different because they're kind of op- more open to it, mm-hmm. willing to mm-hmm. read it. Um, I remember giving a seminar or a talk about my books and, you know, I said, people have, you turn their nose up at romance every now and then, but that, then I'm like, when you go to Walmart, what is the, what are the books mm-hmm. filling up those shelves? Mm-hmm. Romance. I was like, who's reading them? <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. you know, filling the demand. Pe- of course people love romance, you know? It's, what do you think changed? Why do you think it's like more out in the open now? Well, you know, I'm not sure, you know, with the publishing industry and the internet, there's been a lot of disruption, I'm sure you ladies know, Mm -hmm. in terms of a lot of writers being able to get their work out there. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed is, of course, you've got a lot more writers doing that. Um, And then because you're reading on your e-books or your mobile devices, not everybody knows that you're reading a romance. So Mm -hmm. I think you can be on the, the train or the subway or the bus reading a romance now, whereas before I remember <laughs> having to hide the book cover. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I didn't want anybody to see. 
<laughs> no, it's not a problem. You can kind of get away with that indulgence, you know, like you download two books at once and you just kind of keep ripping through them. And so I think there's just so many things with the industry changing, people changing. Look at diversity nowadays and people just thinking, you know, they're, I want to, you know, I'm interested in learning more and being a little bit more free with kind of my thoughts and my thinking and, and love in general, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what's up. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, even kind of to that point about how, you know, so many more folks can really get out there and get their work out there. <clears throat> I think, you know, you are a really great example of that. And, you know, a quick look at your website even makes it clear that, like, beyond being a writer, you're a businesswoman. <laughs> like, you can buy your books on your site, T-shirts, pillows, mugs, all kinds of branded stuff. I'm wondering what led you to start your own company and self-publish? Yeah. So for sure, I think any writer starting out thinks, well, do I go traditional, meaning, you know, with maybe the big publishers or do I do it myself? And for me, I think I had a comfort level um, with my PR background, already writing, understanding what goes into a production of a piece or a product that I could handle it on my own. And then there was the whole idea of, do I really want to go through years of rejection probably? Mm in order to get my voice heard. And the truth is my novels are different. They're not, I mean, they are erotic erotic romance, which is always great, hot, sticky romance. But they are, they take a different turn in terms of the, you know, I try to tackle social issues in a way that are a little bit different. You know, these novels, for example, Awakening, the first in the trilogy, it's a futuristic trilogy. So Mm -hmm. it's not something that I think the mainstream publisher would be ready to, to understand or willing to understand. And I think I made the right choice when self-publishing because you always find your tribe, right? Uh-huh. Those people who are interested in, you know, there's some group of people for everybody. So in doing it on my own, I was able to find that group on my own. So it worked out. So, I mean, it's interesting that you mentioned that. I mean, I, to us, like the whole reason that we picked your book is because we're in all of this like whole ass universe that you built for the oh, series. Good. <laughs> yeah, I mean that type of world building usually is reserved for like dystopian YA novels, right? It's like mm-hmm. the Hunger Games and all of those kind of things, and it's really impressive how you, you know created this entire like I said not just a world but a universe that these folks Mm -hmm. and Kira and and all of her ilk inhabit can you kind of because we just read an excerpt for Mm -hmm. the show of course can you give us kind of a quick overview of the setting for the action in Awakening for sure so um so the world building was something that I decided on pretty deliberately early on in deciding whether or not I wanted to write a romance that was contemporary, historical, or futuristic. And I did futuristic specifically for that reason. I said, I don't really know too many, at least I wasn't aware of it at the time, erotic novels or romances that were diverse in this way and set in the future uh-huh. in this uh-huh. way. And I really enjoyed the opportunity to develop my own culture and my uh-huh. own kind of so society. Uh-huh. So for the realm, it's a society that's made up of a number of worlds And the worlds are grouped into dominions. So there are five of them. And um, I guess the biggest part that makes it different, besides it being in the future, is the fact that society is based on a caste or social class system. And there are four in this particular series. So there's the lowest caste, which is the subordinate caste. And then above that, that's where Kira is. That's where Kira is. And then you have the protectorate caste, which are, of course, the protectors, kind of what you call their military. And that's where the other part of her love triangle tie right, falls tie. into that group. Above that would be the Senate. And those are the senators. And they're kind of like the government officials. And that's where Ganon is, the other okay. part of that love triangle. And at the top, of course, is the elite. So you've got these four different castes. And there's um, kind of a spoken slash unspoken rule that you don't really have relationships between certain castes. So the upper two castes, of course, they're free to do as they want, and the lower two are able to do the same. And it gets tricky with this love triangle because, of course, you've got Kira um, in love with men from different castes, and one Mm -hmm. of them is considered forbidden. So it adds to the whole kind of tension um, to the book. And it also kind of talks about um, society in a different way, Um, because what I liked about setting it up in this way is that it wasn't so much about sexual orientation or race that people were discriminating against. It was more against the caste 
So mm -hmm. you'll find a lot of fluidity in the characters in terms of who they love, how many people they love, because there's polyamory, which I call multiples in this case in the novel. But that's normal. That's okay. It's more about what role you've been predetermined to fill and that you should stay in that particular box. So mm. it takes you on the journey about her deciding, well, am I going to stay in the box or not? You know, can I just be free to love who I love or, or do I want to follow the rules? Wow. Where did you start with um, writing this? You said you were deliberate about the decision to make it futuristic and map out, uh, set a new a new environment, but um, where did you start? Was it a character, a location? Yeah, so I definitely started with character. Um, I think, you know, as a writer, you ladies know, you, you always say, is it character or plot, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which one comes first? And for me, I think I've discovered that it, I think it's more character, of course, in a year from now, it might change to plot, but I see the character as the one, if you've got a great character, someone who someone can resonate with, um, they see themselves in and kind of can root for, then you're, fall, you're so interested in seeing what they do next. Right. So once I had, you know, the girl, the protagonist in mind, I was able to say, okay, well, where do I want to put her, right? And that, that's where I said, well, this is where I want to kind of take a challenge and put her in a different setting that I don't think anybody has ever seen before. Cool. What was the most difficult part yeah. of creating the series? Um, that's a good question. Um, probably, I don't know. It's so hard. I don't know if I can say there was a difficult part of creating it. It was so much fun to write. Uh -huh. I think it was just, I think towards trying to understand, you know, the thing about writing and I tell people all the time, you come up with an idea of how you want it to end up, and then it changes as you go. <laughs> you know? I think that, right? It comes, it comes down to the character, and that's why I say the character bosses me around and says, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so I really have to go, okay, well, you pivot, and you pivot, and you pivot in the storyline, and you say, well, how, you know, how am I bringing that to a particular end that makes sense for the people? And that honors kind of the, the readers and what their expectations are and what I've set up for it. So I think it was just pivoting all the time. <laughs> and saying, well, okay, well, book two, this is not where we wanted to go, but this is how, how it's going to be interesting and how it's still mm. going to be passionate and, and still really drive the story. Wow. I mean, I think yeah. that really, it comes through and especially that attention to who that character is. Like I very very early even when we met Kira when she was younger I was already in right I was like okay mm -hmm. I see who she mm -hmm. is I'm interested in learning more oh she can't come what's happening there what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to know what's going on and, and it you know as things unfold and things get you know scary sometimes it was I was never really able to put it down because I was so totally drawn into her world not just where she lived but you know internally because she dealt with so many external and internal conflicts mm -hmm. um and you really care about where she lands in each one of those so I thought that was pretty dope um and speaking of which you know as we read in your bio you said you're fond of creating characters who step outside of the expected I'm wondering how that manifests for you in Awakening so for me, it definitely was the whole relationship mm -hmm. between her and the two men. So I played with the idea of, you know, I talked about polyamory being um, an accept, a normal, it, it's accepted now, but in more of a mainstream acceptance mm -hmm. in this futuristic setting, that that was never an issue. It was an option. Mm -hmm. So for her, I wanted her to have multiple challenges and conflicts, as you say, it's well, I could be with one man or I could be with both men, but can I be with that guy if that guy doesn't want that me to be with yeah. that person? And then there's the whole restricted cast thing. My parents aren't going to like this at all. Even though that they one, got their own situation going on. <laughs> then they have their own 
situation going on and then you know the hypocrisy there i really enjoyed writing about their hypocrisy. yeah that i was like like <laughs> when her heart stopped Ooh, we, i was like you have got to be kidding i mean and you it's not like you didn't foreshadow it and like you know we we got to see her friend with her you know partners but it was still really like oh okay i felt that <laughs> that's, right, that's right so it was really manifesting in terms of her um kind of you know stepping out of the box turning commission on the head because she's saying i have all this choice it's really up to me it's now up to me in terms of what i do and i think when you look at today in the media or just in society with you know diversity and the me too and women's empowerment and how we're kind of coming into our own um i thought that was a really good message because I think there's an opportunity for people to say, okay, yeah, we we're all in, we're getting empowered. We are empowered as women. And now, what do I do with all of it? Now it's all on me, right, to decide how my life is going to live, who I'm going to love. Mm-hmm. So I like I like doing it that way. Cool. So so in the book, Kira is very clear that Kira owns her own power, but she is also drawn to very powerful men. So we kind of want to mm-hmm. twist that question and twist this question around to you. I know you're married, but what most attract? What are you most attracted to in a potential sexual partner? This we'll take this back to the pre-marriage rebel <laughs> <laughs> or partner in general, I yeah. guess, right? Yeah. So you know, I am a heterosexual woman. Um, so I guess, of course, I'd want a man. A man. Um, I think he'd have to be someone who. You know, I, I guess I look at my husband and see what I end up, and I think that was the ideal person. He's strong, but he's able to be very compassionate. He's very passionate as well. Um, very much a person who's a family person. But at the same time, when we talk about, you know, the romance and all that, he gets it. He's turned on by it. <laughs> he, thinks, he thinks he's the inspiration for my novel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'll take that credit, thanks. That's me, that's me, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so you know i like a, a guy who is able to see himself as a partner a supporter um of the woman that he's with and i think you know we talk about women being empowered and and who they are and the next book i'm writing really touches on you know its ascendance which will be the fourth book in the series talks about you know the man being in subordinate position and the woman being in the elite position and how he is still considered a man mm-hmm supporting a woman who is in a higher powerful position so that one's very interesting as i'm writing is that that gonna be with uh liana leandra Leandra, sorry okay and and kira's brother Uh, oh (laughs) oh okay see i ain't get that far okay that's exciting (laughs) okay y'all heard it here first Have you ever, so Rebel, have you ever been torn between two people like Kira has? Wow, good question. Um, you know what? No, I wish I have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, you it's wrote it very fantasy. well. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, this is it. It's my fantasies. I think that's what I'm speaking <laughs> to. <laughs> you know, you're inspired by things that happen sometimes and things that maybe you wish could happen. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think, have I ever been, t- I don't think, have you been in a triangle? I don't think I ever have, but I've always been like a super duper serial monogamist. So like, okay. I, it's like I get blinders once I am like fully in with somebody. So I guess no. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I have, but I don't know if it was really like true love or just me like being a hoe. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I thought we were really great. I mean, but either way, it was fun. <laughs> I mean, that's well, listen, I gotta add to that because I think we don't know, like, we're not open to necessarily being with more than one in a regular basis. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, if we thought it was an option, maybe we would realize we were in love triangles more than. Uh, yeah, and well, I might have been in a few and not known. It. Well, you know what? For a fact, I know yes. I was in some and didn't know until later after the fact. Like, oh shit, you okay? 
Uh, yeah, I yeah. Well, now that you say that, I mean, I was married to a whole ass cheating husband, so I guess I was. <laughs> Well, now that's some new perspective. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Um, oh, so another thing that we're interested in is, you know, you you said that in the very beginning you were trying to figure out was this going to be present day, historical? Was it going to be fiction? You know, uh, futuristic? What draws you to like the speculative fiction? And also, part two of that, what draws you to writing about the erotic? Oh yeah, because. So I have always read more of the erotic romances. Unfortunately, that was yes when I was under 10. Um, <laughs> that's when it started. Details. <laughs> Poor mother, I didn't know that. Um, you know what it was? Why I'm drawn to erotic romance. I have read those romances that are not erotic. Um, and I always felt like I was missing part of the story that if they faded to black, for example, and you don't really get the love scene, or if you got the love scene and they kind of glossed oh, over man. it. That's so I, annoying. I felt like I was missing a big part of the story. So I, without a doubt, knew I was going to write an erotic romance because I, in my love scenes, you're seeing it's not just, you know, boom, chica, boom, chica, wow, right? wow, right? <laughs> it's not like just start a story and then get back to the story. It's really taking person from the beginning of the love scene and an explicit, hot, passionate one to another part of their mm-hmm. emotion at the Absolutely. end of it. So they kind of go through a process of development throughout it. So it's not just the mm-hmm. sex, but it is the development of the characters and how they felt from the beginning to the end. So I knew I wanted to keep that because I thought, you know, sex is a really, really good thing. <laughs> and it tells you so much. If you speak, it's a language on its own that you can kind of communicate with the partner. And of course, as a reader, you kind of understand more about them and how they interact and get, you just learn so much more about people that way. It's a very intimate part of the whole yeah. story that I don't think. People about, and it's so. a time when people are vulnerable in a way that they usually aren't. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's when you usually let down a lot of your guard. Mm-hmm. Right. And show who you really are. That makes sense to me. And then the other part of that question is what drew you to this, this futuristic setting? Um, I wanted the chance to develop my own world. Mm. So I wanted to be able to create languages, to create um, a system of technology, of you know, kind of governance and law, of cultural kind of references that people like myself who was who are avid readers can really get immersed into the story even mm-hmm. farther. So it's not just a romance, it's really getting, you know, in, you're, you're part of something. Mm. You know that if you're reading this book, you're kind of part of that. You know what the realm series is about. You get those little, you know, quotes or you know when somebody talks about, you know, Solomon or something like that, mm-hmm. you know, oh, that's like that used for time lapse when they travel you know it kind of brings you together as a community of readers around a particular Mm storyline so i thought it was just a great way to immerse immerse the readers in the book even more yeah Mm -hmm. no it's effective for sure so i'm interested in what you're reading outside of your own work right now yeah so um i read a lot of different things sometimes a lot of not necessarily just romance, um, but like thrillers, you know, James Rollins, Dan Brown, stuff like that. But in terms of romance, I was reading um, Sylvia Day quite a bit. And um, for erotic, more erotic romance, there was some Jane Ryland stuff. I read anything I can get my hands on, really. Um, I find when, when I'm writing, though, it kind of gets slowed down because <laughs> you're focused on any time you have to actually get some thoughts on in you know on some quote-unquote paid yeah. paper I mean that's so. kind of the worst part about writing a book right is that <laughs> you don't get to read as much unless it's something that provides reference for what you're writing so true. that is something that I was like oh my gosh now I'm part of the, the writing of the book I'm not necessarily mm-hmm. reading as many as I, as I used to do but, you yeah. are you able to go back like besides all the edits and all of that kind of stuff are you ever able to just go back and read them for pleasure your own books yeah (laughs) 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 you know what it is it's like it's done i feel like okay because you'll you'll analyze it won't you you know what i mean you kind of get too picky so 
you know, in preparing for this interview, I was like, okay, let me go back to that excerpt that you're referring to. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember. That was that was a good scene. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's just like some an actor would say they don't watch their own movies sometimes i just feel like yeah, no we're, we're we're done with that chapter and moving on so. yeah no it's it's i deal with the same thing i was um doing a podcast interview about my latest book and somebody asked me what was the best part of the process and i was like i finished like <laughs> it was over it was fantastic doing it but i was ready once I was yeah. done with that, I was ready to move on to the next thing. And and I could appreciate oh, the accomplishment yeah. of having finished it. But, you know, I think when you write, you're always eager to get on to the next thing because that's the fun part of it is the, the yeah. dreaming and the creating of the new thing. It is. And when you're writing it, that's the thing, you know, someone said, right. The hardest part of writing mm-hmm. is writing <laughs> because you've got the, you've got the whole story in your head and now you're trying to articulate mm-hmm. it in a, in a, in a storyline and it can kind of be like, Oh my gosh, I just, I can't wait to write yep. the next one. <laughs> um, yeah. You just can't wait. So, you know, I end up having to say, okay, what do I enjoy mm-hmm. about it? Having to remind myself, what am I enjoying about this scene? And then it usually kind of helps me get back focused, but yeah, I mm-hmm. get it. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So one of the things we do as we're wrapping up our interviews is ask a would you rather <laughs> question. So oh, here we go. Prepare <laughs> yourself. So as I read your books, I so I'm a huge Harry Potter fan and so I don't want to this is far from Harry Potter, but the worlds and the detail. I mean, I could totally see myself at a theme park <laughs> for, for, your, yeah. for the realm. I could totally see myself at the realm, <laughs> going to the expo, all of that. Um, so I, I imagine this book as, uh, you know, portrayed on the screen. So would you rather have your book adapted into a movie by either Tyler Perry? So think... Medea, loud characters, <laughs> overacting, or <laughs> the two white dudes that pre- that make South Park, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. So do you want a Medea style realm or a South Park style mm. realm? <laughs> mm, so good, this question. Oh my God. Huh. You know what? I'm going to say South Park. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> please, please explain. Weird. Okay. So I feel like South Park because if I don't watch it often, but I know they've got like a like an off color mm-hmm. humor. Yeah. Oh yeah, right? I feel like you would get the the nuances of this erotic romance in a way that Tyler Perry is like over the top. <laughs> yes. I don't think it would be, it's already a really dense, rich story. South Park would just add like a tongue in cheek to it that would take it over the edge. I think. I like, <laughs> okay. Okay, I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. Okay, so that was awesome, and that's a good place for us to end. <laughs> we want to say thank you so much for joining us. And can you tell us where people can find you and your work? Oh, for sure. You can go to my website, uh, rebelmillerbooks.com. Or you can find me on Amazon, um, you can buy books, um, Barnes and Noble, wherever we they sell um, digital um, books, and you can also order print books through some of those online retailers too. But definitely check me out on my website. You know, just have all the information there and on my social media. Awesome, course. and those are on Twitter. Your Rebel Miller Books, with, but it's B O X, and and exactly. on IG it's Rebel Rebel, Rebel Miller <laughs> Books with an S at the end. <laughs> Yes, right. awesome. Well, that awesome. wraps up this episode of the Turn On. Thanks, everyone. Thank for you us. so much for your time Thank today. You. Thank you for having me. Loved it. I really had a good Thanks, time. Bye. This week's episode was produced by us, Kenry and Erica, and edited by Ballistic. The theme song is from Brazy. Please subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast app. Follow us on Twitter at The Turn On Pod and Instagram at The Turn On Podcast and find links to books, transcripts, guest info, and other fun stuff at TheTurnOnPodcast.com. Bye!